Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now we're gonna have a pairing of a firm hobby favorite, and that is the Avicularia Avicularia, or the common pink toe. Now, um, we say the common pink toe, but it's, it's actually known by a number of different common names. It can be the Guyanan pink toe, um, common pink toe, just plain forward pink toe, and it gets a little confusing because um, some of the other avicularia are named the same with their common names. So this is a very important um, point to make that it's, it's really important that you learn your Latin names because it doesn't matter where you go in the world, this common pink toe, the avicularia avicularia, will always be known as the avicularia avicularia. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world or who you're talking to, they will instantly know what you are talking about. If we go in there and say, oh yeah, my common pink toe done this, that and the other, they'll be like, hmm, is he on about that common pink toe or that common pink toe? Not quite sure. Your Latin never changes. Very, very important. Something we were always taught in the zoo, always use your Latin because Latin doesn't change. Very important. Right then. <coughs> You're quite all right, my love. Now then, let's have a little look and see what, I, what these guys got up to. See you soon. Now here comes our little male. We got him in a catch cup. Here he comes. And as you would have recognised, this is the the common pink toe, Avicularia avicularia or commonly known as the Avic Avic. Now these really are a, a pretty new world spider coming from South America. They are very widely spread. They are everywhere from Venezuela through to French Guiana, Trinidad, down into Peru, Bolivia and Brazil. These, this species is sometimes called the Guyanan pink toe also. As you can see there, because they have so many common names, it's very important that we we use the Latin name because it doesn't matter where you go, the Latin name remains the same. And this is why we quite often say, especially to um, to newcomers to the hobby, try and learn your Latin names because it really does make things easier. Because certain spiders can be given the same common name but they are not the same spider so as you can see there our male is shaking away there now these are these are an arboreal spider and um, they are found throughout the hobby they're a very very popular spider very calm natured spider Now, one of the things that we've noticed with our avics, and we have quite a few, is they are such messy webbers. As you can see there, there is nothing really pretty about the webbing going on in that enclosure. They always end up looking a little bit rough. You can see he's tapping away now. He's got that gentle throbbing in his body. He's sending those signals. She hasn't responded at all yet. Now we've seen a different response in our female avix. Sometimes they can literally, here she goes, she's moving now. Sometimes they can literally just sit there and do nothing. And another time they will blast into, into motion, come tearing out against our male. This quite often or not, although it looks aggressive, doesn't generally end up in an aggressive situation. They have very strong feed response, the avix. And I think quite often that there is more of a feed type mode, a more of a warning. You know, it's a female putting her foot down. She's letting him know that she is no walkover. Here he comes. Now you notice the males in these, they always look quite frail, a little bit delicate. Whereas our female, she's a big chunky thing. Look at her. He's not afraid though. He's gone straight in there. 
Now, one of the things we also notice with the Avic Avic is the, uh, the fact that you notice the male's movements are very, very jerky. They don't seem to be fluid like other spiders. They seem very jumpy, quite jerky movements, little snaps of movements. As you can see there, he is desperately trying to get her to lift up. She's not having any of it. She is stuck to the side of the, the glass there. Look at the abdomen on her. She is in beautiful condition. Really, really nice. Now, this particular male has been through about, I think, four or five of our females now. A couple of them he's done multiple times. So he's, he's actually, uh, he's really done the rounds. Now look at that. She has stuck her head down into the, into the hide where she spends most of her time. <laughs> he's, he's pushing on her abdomen. This is not going to lift her up, my friend. Here we go. We've turned around. She is playing very, very hard to get. Now this is better. Now she's now she's coming into the game a little bit. You can see the colouring on these guys. Absolutely phenomenal. Now something else that's um, familiar with these. These guys actually do possess um, type two urticating hairs. Now they can't flick these hairs, like many New World spiders that kick up hairs off their abdomen. These guys can't do that. They need to be in direct contact, which is a little bit um, of a bit of a situation because, because these guys are so docile, then they are often handled by keepers, you know, because they, they just are such a friendly spider. But you can still get those urticating hairs on your hands when you're handling them. So you do take a little bit of care. Be careful. Now, one of the other things that these guys are quite common for is in terms of um, how they defend themselves, they can actually squirt poo. So they will turn their back to you and literally fire poo at you. And it can travel quite some distance. And this is to try and ward off any potential threats. Could be from any type of animal that's come along, that's met them and trying to actually eat them. You can also see there with a nice close-up photograph of the footage there, just how hairy these spiders are. They are very, very hairy. Ooh, focusing on the enclosure now, not the spider. There we go. Now you see our male is drastically trying to um, position himself with our female and she is not making this easy. You notice her fangs are splayed there as well. She does appear at the moment to be a little bit of a reluctant participant. Although she's not showing any aggression, aggression She's not actually showing that she's particularly willing either. You notice how he's maintaining contact throughout. Here we go. Now we're looking a little bit better. You can see she's lifted herself up a little bit. You notice our male keeps jumping out of the way. He's not entirely convinced that she's going to play along with his desires. Interesting to see how he has literally stroked pretty much every part of her body. He has been all over her. Now, often or not with these guys, it is literally just about getting in the right position. Look at that, he's completely dominating her. Here we go. He's throbbing and shaking. She should be under no illusion of his intention. Whoop. He's still a little nervous. Right, we're going out the back of the enclosure now. Now, quite often we'll allow them to do this and wander around and just see what they get up to. Have a little bit of a rest. 
You can see our females just chilled out now. Everyone's taking a breather for five. Sometimes when they're like this, we have to um, encourage them back in because sometimes they can sort of almost forget what it was all about, what they were doing there. So we literally just encourage them back in. So with a paintbrush, we gently lift him up. And as soon as they make contact, there you go. It's all back on again. Now our females come out now. So this is starting to look a little bit more promising. Hopefully when we can get them on the on the top of the enclosure or on the outside, there's our male that he's showing off now. We've just had to bring him back round. He went to walk out across the desk. So we've brought him back. I don't think our female was particularly impressed with that manoeuvre. We're just going to get them to maintain contact again. Here we go. Now you can see there, as once they actually get the contact, they get back on it again. Now if this was a spider that we were particularly worried about our male being eaten, we wouldn't move him like that. This is because these are gentle spiders. And uh, very rare do we, do we see any aggression from our females with the, with the avic avic. So we're, we're quite confident when we, we move our spider back towards her that we will get the desired effect. If this was something like um, one of the chillabrachis or something like that, we wouldn't um, try and move our male towards the female. We would leave them to their own devices no matter how long it takes. So it's very important that um, you tailor your your approach to the species of spider that you're actually dealing with. Not all spiders can be put in the position you want them in. He's actually working really, really hard. And she is still being a little bit reluctant. Now, generally speaking, if you're um, if you're interested in breeding your spiders, these are not a bad choice to make for your first breeding. You know, the pairings are relatively straightforward. Um, we're seeing this in pretty much real time. Uh, I think this whole pairing took no more than about twenty minutes or so, and they're very gentle with one another. So, you know, you can literally take your time and you not have to worry so much about losing your male which as a beginner is obviously a bonus you know we want you to have success and you can learn so much from doing these simple spiders so that later on once you've got a few of these pairings different types and you've done a few you can then move on to the more delicate spiders spiders that require a little bit more um, insight into what's going on to ensure the safety of your male. Now this is what it's all about with the breeding, is ensuring the safety of your male. We should make, be making the utmost effort to secure his life. It does annoy me when we see online people literally throwing their males in, sometimes literally dropping them on top of a female, and it's no wonder she spins around and nails that male before he's even had a chance to say hello. You know, it's the males, I don't know why, but for many, the males are not considered the same as the females. And they are almost considered expendable to uh, some people with their breeding efforts. This is not the case. You know, we have a very, very high um, success rate with our males. I think last year we were up around about 97% and we bred a lot of spiders last year and 97% um, of our males walked away to pair with another female. So there is no reason, it's a common, common old wives tale that females kill their males at breeding time. They don't. 
if you do your homework, you do your introductions properly, you do your conditioning properly of your females, you know, really try and understand your spiders, you will secure that male's future. Now, males are short-lived as it is. And when we look at long longevity, the avic avic is not a long-lived spider in comparison to some others. Females, normally around about eight or nine years, and uh, they have done a full lifespan. Uh, males, you're only looking at maybe, I don't know, maybe a year after maturing. So normally within three to four years, our male would be mature, depending on how he's been fed. But we can see now our female is actually quite, she's given herself up now. Our male is literally right underneath her. You notice how very gentle and delicate he's been. He's very, very slowly looking for that epigastric furrow. He's in no rush. Notice there how the emboli is literally cocked it's ready to be used you can see it clearly and he's literally looking for the entrance see how he turns it sideways there you go he is actually penetrating as we speak you can see how he's rolling that pedipalp and you can see where the emboli is actually being pulled See it opening up like that? That is literally like a fish hook. You can see it clearly there now. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. That whole long needle-like thing gets penetrated into the female. Now we've moved over to the other pedipalp now, and you can see that in the background. And that is inseminating as we speak. So we've gone from a very, very reluctant female to now she is literally quite happy to sit there and, and pair with this male. Perseverance has paid off for this little fella. He had to work hard for it, mind. Now, we've not got it yet. You see how the emboli is sitting? He's not penetrated with this particular side. He may well be on the other side. Yes, yes, the other side you can see where he was working. He's literally reaching through. He's trying to find the entrance again. So we've had successful insemination. Now, often with these guys, they do it multiple times. So it's nothing unusual to see him stay in this position for a, a lengthy period of time. Marvellous that we can see the emboli so clearly. Uh, it looks like he's pulling away now. He's done his job. Notice how he's keeping her at literally arm's length. We're just going to turn them around now. You can see the colouring of these spiders. It's absolutely phenomenal. They really are a very, very pretty spider. I love the pink toes. This was the first arboreal spider I ever owned when I was a child. Back then, we used to struggle to keep them alive. They always seemed to be very, very delicate. And I think one of the main reasons was we never really kept them warm enough. And we didn't really truly understand the effects of humidity. These guys like a dry enclosure. Many people keep them far too damp. They like humidity, but they don't like being wet. There you go. She's backing off now. She's had enough. You can see how the difference in our male. He's actually done his job. She's coming back out. That's it. He's off. A perfect example of how these guys flee a situation. They jump. 
He's now on the table. We don't need to panic. He's not going anywhere. He's quite calm. Often or not, when they jump down like this, they will sit and clean their pedipalps. So we don't worry about our male. We'll get our female back in the enclosure. A lovely, a lovely close up there. What a stunning spider. The common pink toe. Avicularia, avicularia. This really is the mainstay of the hobby. Absolute ideal beginner spider. Perfect choice. And a perfect pairing. Right, well, that was hard work, wasn't it? That poor little male, he really had to go for it. You know, she weren't exactly up for it, was she? It didn't matter what he done, you know, all that different little bit of sweet talking he done. Maybe he was a little bit erratic. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've had a few of these avicularia um, pairings now. We've done quite a few. That particular male, he might just be tired because we have got four or five females and he's been around all of them. So um, he's quite well travelled. Um, he's getting on a little bit. I know how he feels. You get tired, don't you? So he's, um, you know, he's, he's probably just a little bit exhausted, to be honest. What a way to go. <laughs> anyway, so he has, um, he's been in there and he's done his stuff. Now, one of the things that we've noticed with the avicularia is they're quite jumpy with what they do. He sort of does a lot of snapping and jumping about. So you see him go in there and all of a sudden he's, boom, he's off and he's done something else. And they're very erratic, that's the word, erratic in their pairing. And we've noticed this with all the avicularia. They're all a little bit like that, some worse than others. He was terrible, you know, he's all, he's all over the place. And maybe she wasn't finding that particularly attractive. Because as you saw there, she'd done her best to just keep walking away. And he was like, whoa, 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 you come back here, my lovely. And uh, he brought her back every time. And then eventually she stuck her head down in the in the hole and she's like, no, you can't see me anymore. And there he was just tapping on her bum like, come on, come on, how'd you come? And eventually she just had to give it up. She was like, oh, for God's sake, will he ever go away? And uh, yeah, she came out and eventually they got it on. Now we noticed that when they came up to the top of the enclosure, that's when it really started to pick up because one, she didn't really have anywhere to go now. So she'd sort of like got herself out in the open, which was a bit of a mistake on her part, I think. And um, he took full advantage. Now we noticed how he went down the back and you would have seen in there, you would have seen me come across in the back with a paintbrush and we just lifted him up, put him back in again. Now that's because he had sat down there for a little while. And um, as quite often happens, when they separate like that and they're on the opposite sides of the enclosure, if there's no tapping and drumming going on, I don't know whether they fall asleep, maybe they maybe have a quick nap or something, I'm not quite sure. But they um yeah, they seem to lose the plot a little bit. So with this with these, we know these are very calm, very gentle spiders. So we know that we can move him back up, get him back into the picture again, you know? Remind him of what the hell we're doing here. And uh we just lift him back up, and as soon as he makes contact, they're back on again, and it's all switched on. So they're working away. We saw there eventually, when they both came out and come onto the outside, we saw that very, very clear insemination. And it's lovely to get that close up footage. And you would have seen there with the emboli, when I say to you, it's like a fish hook, you can see how that fine, fine emboli goes to a very, very fine end. And it's like a fish hook. And then, <coughs> excuse me. And then you'll see when he's, he's literally like this with it, and then you see him rotate like that. And that is because he's actually found the epigastric furrow. That fish hook has gone in and it twists up. And then that is what he's doing. He's rolling it like this. So he's inseminating while he's doing this. When he's giving it all this with the, with the emboli, that's not insemination. He is literally looking for the epigastric furrow. So he's like, where is it? And it's got to be here somewhere. And then all of a sudden you see him stop. And then he's, he's like this. That is insemination. That is where he's actually going on. Now, when we see it on other spiders, when you see um, a spider like the, say, like the Gabonensis, you see them, when they actually inseminate and he pulls her to him, she literally buckles up backwards and he's pulling up like that. And what that is, is when you saw on him, the emboli, if the, if the, 
if the emboli is like that, the actual, um, oh, it's going to clean out of my head now. <laughs> the actual emboli is actually comes down and it goes back up the pedipalp like that. So if this was the pedipalp, sorry, the emboli comes down and goes up the pedipalp like that. So what he does is, is he goes past the epigastric furrow and then when he brings it back, that's the entrance. And that's because the epigastric furrow points backwards towards the female's end of her abdomen. So if you imagine, when she opens that flap, it's like that. And then he goes past it, hooks in, and comes back. And that's why they double up like that and pulls them over. So it makes a little bit of sense, hopefully, of, um, of how and what you're seeing, what goes on. Now, with the Avix, we notice that they're very gentle. He gets in there and he just gently does his job, you know? Very, very nice. And then you saw, when they finished and they parted company, he was still very, very careful. He kept her at arm's length. And then all of a sudden, boom, he just jumps. And he's off and he's on the desk. Now, you notice there we didn't worry about him. He sits on the desk. Nine times out of ten, when they do that and they land on the desk, the first thing they do is clean their emboli. So we know he's busy. He ain't going nowhere. So we sort our female out, and then we go and catch our little male up and put him back in his box. So, another successful pairing in the beastie room. Really, really pleased with them. They are such wonderful spiders. And these, these guys make absolutely first-rate beginner spiders. If you want to go down the route of um, arboreal spiders, these really are a classic spider to go down and do. And if you're really into your breeding, you want to try and breed some spiders. Perhaps you've been keeping for a little while. And you're thinking, do you know, I'd like to have a go at that. These are a really good bet because they are so gentle. They really are a nice, easy spider to attempt your first breeding project. So, don't just sit there looking at them. Get out there, get yourself a male, and have a go. Gotta be worth a try. Right then, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I'll see you soon, guys.